Okay, well, before we get into the derivatives of some of the trig functions, I want to take this moment to uh, review some basic trig facts. This is not everything you need to know, but here's three important things you should know for sure. You should know the basic identities, right? Remember, these can be thought of as points on the unit circle. The tangent is the ratio of the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate, and so on. You should know the Pythagorean I identities. Again, this is just saying that x squared plus y squared equals 1 on the unit circle. And remember how to get the other two? If you take the first equation and you divide both sides by sine squared, I believe you get this one. And if you, uh, actually, this one. If you divide both sides by sine squared, you get this one, I believe. Yeah, and if you divide both sides by cosine squared, you get this one. Anyway, um, the addition angle identities, those are kind of hard to remember, but those are going to come up even this, this quarter. Uh, let's see, the sine of the sum, sine of the first, cosine of the second, plus the cosine of the first, sine of the second. Now remember, if it's a minus, then you have a minus here. Cosine of the sum is cosine of the first, cosine of the second, minus sine of the first, sine of the second. So if there's an addition here, there's a subtraction there. Anyway, uh, the double angle identities, or uh, the first one, the sine of twice an angle is two times sine a cosine a. The cosine twice an angle is cosine squared the first, or cosine squared a minus sine squared a. Remember how to get the other two from the first one? You go back to the first one and you can replace sine squared with one minus cosine squared to get this one. And if you go back to the first one and replace cosine squared with one minus sine squared, you can get this one. The half angle identities, um, those can also be thought of as what's called the reduction angle uh, for formulas. In Math 152, you're going to use trig a lot. In other words, this first one can also be written as cosine squared of x equals 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2. Isn't it true that this angle here is half of this angle? This angle here is half of this angle. And you're going to want to do this in Math 152 because you're able to reduce the power. See how this is a cosine squared and this is, this is a cosine of the first power? Anyway, I just thought I'd bring that up. Okay, so the second thing I, you should be able to do is re, you should re, remember some basic graphs of trig functions here. The sine function looks like this. It's an odd function. And in particular, this strip of the sine function, the one-to-one -one strip from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, is important because if you were to switch x and y, you get something that looks kind of like this. This is the graph of the inverse sine function. This would be 1 pi over 2. This would be negative 1, negative pi over 2. So f inverse of x equals inverse sine of x has domain, let's see, negative 1 to 1. And it has range, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. I like to think of it as you give the inverse sine a number between negative 1 to 1, it gives you an angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Cosine function is even. This is, this is the, the one to one strip that we usually use. So if you were to switch x and y here, you get a strip kind of like that. This would be the point negative 1 pi. This is the point 1, 0. And that, so this is the graph of what we call the inverse cosine function. Or let's call that g inverse of x equals inverse cosine. And the domain is going to be, let's see, uh, negative 1 to 1. And the range is going to be 0 to pi. So think of it like this. You give the inverse cosine a number between negative 1 to 1, it gives you an angle between 0 and pi. Uh, the third graph you, sh you should rec recognize is the tangent. The tangent's an odd function, isn't it? And this is what we normally talk about as the 1 to 1 strip. If you were to reflect that strip across y equals x, you get a graph that looks kind of like this. And this is what we're calling the inverse tangent of x. So <clears throat> y equals inverse tangent of x. The domain, let's see, you give the inverse tangent um, a, a real number between negative infinity and infinity, and it gives you a y value between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Open interval. Okay. All right, the third thing I, I, I want to talk about here. <clears throat> 
you should be able to compute some basic trig values. And um, first of all, there are these things called the quadrantial angles. 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. So if you want to know the tangent of pi, pi would be over here, the tangent's y over x, so the tangent of pi would be 0 over negative 1, which is 0. And also there are these special angles in the first quadrant. This point corresponds to the angle pi over 6, this point is, corresponds to pi over 4, and this, this is a, corresponds to the point pi over 3. So if I ask you what is the tangent of pi over 3, tangent of pi over 3 is the y coordinate over the x coordinate, which would be radical 3. And then you should be able to find the uh, six trig functions of these special angles moved around in different quadrants. For example, if I wanted to find the cosine of 5 pi over 6, first of all you have to, re to remember that 5 pi over 6 is right here. The cosine, so it's this point right here, but it's moved in the second quadrant, so it would actually be negative radical 3 over 2, 1 half. The cosine is the x-coordinate, so the cosine would be negative radical 3 over 2. I have a slightly different way of looking at it. I, I, I learned to remember these two uh, reference triangles, and when we compute these basic trig values in different quadrants, what we're going to do is move these triangles around to different quadrants and label them according to what quadrant we're in. So for example, let's say you want to find the sine of 5 pi over 6. What I would do is I would first draw the angle. 5 pi over 6, where is that? Uh, I think that's in the second quadrant. Right, it's right there. That's 5 pi over 6. So we're going to, since it's a pi over 6, we're going to use this triangle right here and draw this triangle, pi over 6 triangle, in the second quadrant. So let, label it like this. This becomes negative radical 3 over 2. This is 1 half and this is 1. So the sine is the y coordinate. So the y coordinate is 1 half. That way you don't have to remember too much. You just have to remember the, these two triangles. Secant 5 pi over 4. Okay. Draw a picture. Where is 5 pi over 4? Well, if you, if you just start counting, this is pi over 4, this is 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4 is in the third quadrant. Since, it, since it's pi over 4, we're talking about this reference triangle in the third quadrant, so it looks kind of like this, but since you're in the third quadrant, the x would be negative radical 2 over 2, the y would be negative radical 2 over 2. So the secant, remember what that is? That's 1 over the cosine, so it's 1 over negative radical 2 over 2, which if you flip it over, you get negative 2 over radical 2, which can be reduced to just negative radical 2. So it's not that hard. Well, a couple more. Tangent of 4 pi over 3. Well, draw a picture. 4 pi over 3. Let's see. What quadrant is that in? You're talking about pi over 3s here. There's 1 pi over 3. There's 2 pi over 3. This would be 3 pi over 3. So, so doesn't 4 pi over 3 bring you right, right out of there? So again, it's, that, it's, that, it's the same triangle we're looking at before. But now our, re our reference angle is pi over 3 here. So draw the triangle like with this angle. Uh, in the third quadrant, so this would be 1, this would be negative 1 half, this would be negative radical 3 over 2. So the tangent is y over x, so it's negative radical 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half, which is radical 3. One more, the cosecant of pi, that's what's considered to be a quadrantial angle. Let's see, pi is over here, the cosecant Remember what that is? That's 1 over the sine, so it's 1 over 0. So um, 1 over 0 is undefined. So I hope that helps. Those are some, some uh, three important things I think you should know from trig, but there's a lot more stuff as well.